Hello everybody out there on YouTube and welcome back to the Thrash Maniac 99 channel for NNS Serie Walmart Cup Series action as we are getting set for the Gatorade duels here at Daytona to get the lineup set for the Daytona 500. This is duel one which is the drivers who qualified in the uh, qualifying session that the results are on the Facebook page of the series. These are the odd number drivers so 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 so on and so forth. Benjamin Miles, he's locked in, in the, into the pole position unless he was to get wrecked in this race. If he was wrecked in this race, he would have to start in the back of the field. Same goes for in Duel 2 for Angel Navarro. As we are getting set to get the command to fire engines, as you see your lineup on the side here for Duel number 1. So there you go. And here we go, command coming now. Drivers, start your engines! And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, as long as Benjamin Miles in that 41 car just stays out of trouble and just leave the race intact, he will be good to go to stay up at the front for the Daytona 500 to start where he qualified first. So both him and Angel Navarro in the 20 car who is qualified second who is starting on the pole for duel number two which is coming up right after duel one here in the same video. <clears throat> Just as long as those two don't run into trouble they'll be good to go to stay in the first and second spots. Now to correlate how the lineup's going to be after the, these duel races are over Whoever wins duel number one will get to start in third for the Daytona 500. So all these drivers, where they finish, they will stay starting in the odd number positions. Like 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. Same goes over in Division 2 with the even numbers. Like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. All that good stuff. So there you go. And these are two going to be two very short races, 10 laps each here in the duels, just to get these finished, and to also determine a lineup for the Daytona 500. <laughs> pace car getting ready to pull into pit road he is pulling in now so 21 cars in each dual race who is going to get a good start for this start here here we go boogity 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 let's go dual racing boys and girls 10 laps each dual race Benjamin Miles got off to a pretty good start right there. And he's getting draft help from Bob Jones in the 11. I figured he would have went up to get behind his teammate Charles Jackson. But he wants to try to get up to the front because, remember, Bob Jones, if he won this duel race, he'd get to start in the third spot in the Daytona 500. And the leader for lap number one, Bob Jones by a bumper over Danny Wells. And now here comes Danny Wells down low with the help from Anthony McCrory. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So Danny Wells running in the first spot. Anthony McCurry in second. Now here comes Stephen Pollard to third. Down low underneath Bob Jones for the third spot as there's a couple of three wide battles going on back there. Kyle Corbett about got down into P.J. Williams. That could have been disastrous. <clears throat> Eight to go here in duel number one. And here comes Ian Dutta with a run for third. 
Now it's going to be three wide for third because here comes Kyle Matthews. Stephen Pollard, the third, got forced way up high, and he's still up high in a three wide battle with Bob Jones and Jesse Setti. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Jesse Setti, I see, getting a draft help from uh, Dylan Poteet down low for fourth. Trying to get herself up higher in the ranks for the uh, lineup here at Daytona. <clears throat> Kyle Matthews with help from Jesse Setti going to come low for second. Right now Benjamin Miles just keeping his nose clean, running up high in the middle of that high line. Just trying to avoid trouble as much as he can. <clears throat> right now... Danny Wells up in the lead. Kyle Matthews running right behind him along with Jesse Setti. But now here comes Dylan Poteet underneath for fourth with help from P.J. Williams. Battle for the lead. Here comes Kyle Matthews with a run to the inside. Quite a bit of shuffling going on right up there. <clears throat> Dylan Poteet coming underneath for the uh, third spot. <clears throat> He's got P.J. Williams. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry for that. I just caught a whiff of something. But, uh... But anyways, as I was saying, yeah, P.J. Williams, third car in line down low. And then you got Seth Cole down there. In fact, I'm going to be right back. I need to get some water. All right, I am back, and when I came back one lap later, nothing's really changed up at the front, but, uh, yes, some of the other drivers I'm seeing trying to make strides up here. I see Dorian Facepuncher, Seth Cole, Austin LaPlante, Kyle Corbett, and others all running that low line trying to make something happen here with four laps to go. And I've noticed some, there are three out of the four Gibbs cars in duel number one. Bob Jones, rookie Tanner Sullivan, and Charles Jackson back there in that orange Eris car. He's starting to slip back quite a ways. <clears throat> Whoa, P.J. Williams! P.J. Williams went un below the yellow line. I'm not sure why, but he just split up the field quite a little bit so that forces seven cars to pull away from everybody else I have no idea what PJ Williams was thinking there <clears throat> he went below the O line he hit the apron and then about collected Seth Cole and that could have been a big wreck a big problem but luckily PJ was able to keep it together but still what that was weird Danny Wells, however, still maintaining the top spot. Next time by will be two to go here in duel number one. <clears throat> and now some cars trying to run in a formation to try to get back up there. Two to go for Danny Wells. <clears throat> Benjamin Miles back there. He's still <clears throat> maintaining his car to avoid trouble. <clears throat> So as long as he keeps it together here in these final final lap and a half, then he'll be okay to stay up on the pole. Kyle Matthews pulling out of the way to try to go low for the race lead underneath of Danny Wells. Jesse said he darts low. And I have no idea why the game just froze right there. But anyways... <clears throat> 
Ed Dan now Kyle Matthews with the run to the inside. He leads that lap as the white flag is out here in duel number one. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's been back and forth between Danny Wells and Kyle Matthews throughout most of this duel. They've been very close to the line. I got a feeling we could see a photo finish here in this one. Nobody wrecked, although we nearly had a wreck with P.J. Williams about losing it on the apron. Danny Wells seems to get a better draft up on the high line than Kyle Matthews does low, but will that come into play as we're coming off turn four for the last time? Who's going to win this race? Oh, it's going to be close, but Danny Wells gets it by a half a car length. Four one-hundredths of a second. Danny Wells wins duel number one and is going to get to start third in the Daytona 500. <clears throat> what a finish that was. Back and forth between these two. So it looks like you can make any line work just as long as you have a draft partner. And Danny Wells has his teammate... Dylan Pote to thank because he gave him that big push. Jesse said he tried to help Kyle Matthews right there in the end, but I guess their draft just wasn't good enough because up high with the draft you can carry a little more speed than on the low line, so there you have it with that. But man, that was still a great finish. But let's take a look at the rest of the results as Danny Wells is going to get to start third in the Daytona 500 by winning duel number one. So great job for him. Kyle Matthews second. Dylan Poteet third. Jesse Setti fourth. Anthony McCrory fifth. Rest of the top ten. Pichu London. Ian Dutta. Seth Cole. Bob Jones. PJ Williams. Rest of the top twenty. Kyle Corbett. Dorian Face Puncher. Austin LaPlante. Stephen Pollard the third. Charles Sanford. Michael Norman. Cody Lamas. Bob Jones. Actually not Bob Jones. <laughs> Charles Jackson, Tanner Sullivan, Benjamin Miles, who managed to keep his car together. So he's going to stay on the pole. And then Joshua Balkan rounding out that. So it looks like Balkan's going to start 41st right now for the Daytona 500. So <clears throat> there you have it with that. But anyways, thank you guys for checking out duel number one. But stay tuned in this video because duel number two is coming up next. Welcome back here to the Gatorade Duels here at Daytona International Speedway to get ready for the Daytona 500 as we are now getting set for duel number two to determine the even-numbered uh, starting drivers. Angel Navarro, who qualified second in Daytona 500 qualifying, which, once again, the qualifying results are on the Facebook page of the Walmart Cup Series. And so, with that being said... Angel Navarro has to just do the same thing Benjamin Miles did. <clears throat> that Benjamin Miles did in the uh, first duel, and that's pretty much stay out of trouble, and he'll be safe to start second in the Daytona 500. But if he were to crash, he would end up starting in the rear of the field, and that second spot will be given to the winner of this duel race. As we are getting ready for the command... Drivers, start your engines. And there you have it. And you see the lineup on the side, or you've seen it already. But now we are getting set to get going here for duel number two here at Daytona. So with this race, it will determine who's going to start second, or start fourth, fifth, sixth, eighth, tenth, twelfth, and you know, you know how it works. You've seen duel number one, it's pretty much the same thing. So there you have it with that. But if Angel Navarro was to win this duel race, he would not only get to stay in second, but also he would let the second place driver start fourth in the uh, 500. So we shall see what happens with this race. And I see starting in fourth here in duel number two is... Season 6 champion, the defending champion, Preston Plored, in the 42 car. And his teammate, Benjamin Miles, starting on the pole for the Daytona 500. Preston Plored would hope to win this dual race so he can start right behind him in line in third. 
So that way he can maybe help his teammate out, his rookie teammate, get through Daytona. But yeah, like I said, not very many rookies this season compared to seasons past. I think there are only... I gotta remember... There are only five rookies in uh, this season. Yeah, Benjamin Miles in the uh, 41. Jeffrey Rose, a newcomer to NR, in the 8 car. Kyle Corbett in the 56. Tanner Sullivan in the 18. And Jessica Villanueva in the 33. Pace car pulls into pit road. It's time to get duel number two going. And here we go. Boogity, 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 let's go duel racing again, boys and girls. Angel Navarro got off to a decent uh, start right there, but he doesn't really have a draft partner right now. But now here comes Chris Michaels in the 07. Chris Michaels, this is going to be interesting. This is his first full-time Walmart Cup series season. Since season one, he he raced well over half the races in season six because of the actions of Brendan Berg got him replaced in the 94 by Chris Michaels. Chris Michaels in his part-time season in the 94, he won two races and they were at Pocono and Thornton. Two very treacherous tracks. Now he's moving on to the 07 car, and by the way, that car won the Daytona 500 last season by Sam Young, and then won another race, made the chase, nearly won the title, so hopefully with double good luck from last season, maybe Chris Michaels can be a guy to, can, to watch out for in the chase if he were to be in it. But Rue McIntyre led lap one, but now Chris Michaels has taken the lead. But now, big draft help, a huge run from Chris Washer and company with Joshua Collar, Jessica Villanueva, and Matt McIntyre. Angel Navarro slipping back. I think he would. I think that's a good idea. In case a wreck were to happen, he wouldn't get involved if he were to fall towards the very back of the pack. And also another thing I noticed. The uh, Burger King Red Bull racing cars, one started in Duel 1, second one here in Duel 2. Stephen Pollard III was in Duel number 1. Dougie Shears right back here in the 83 is in Duel 2, and he's starting to lose the draft a little bit. As Dougie Shears, like I said, same car from last season, except it's a Pontiac car instead of a Toyota. Back up at the front, Joshua Collard has now taken over the lead sport in the STP car in tribute for, a, uh, for uh, the great Richard Petty. Now coming down low for the lead is rookie Jessica Villanueva racing out of Richard Childress Racing in the 33 car. First time in a couple seasons, I remember, uh, that the 33 is in Walmart Cup action. This is a ride that always seems to go on and off from time to time depending on what I decide the cars are going to be. <clears throat> Cup, wow, three Tweenix teammates were working together on the low line. Matt McIntyre, James Silverfox, Alex Hawkins still kind of in that same mold, but Matt McIntyre running in a very good tandem with Jessica Villanueva. Joshua Collar now split, just split up that Tweenix party, and it's now in third. I can say maybe this Daytona 500 could potentially be maybe the best one yet, because with this Daytona we're using the revamped 2009 version, no real wrecks have occurred yet, but we've seen some great racing go on. We saw great racing in the first duel race. So far, it's been just more the same here in duel two. But Jessica Villanueva's just staying up at the front, though. He's, she's got Matt McIntyre right behind her to help her out. Two Bass Pro Shops cars, even though they're part of completely different teams. 
<clears throat> They're working together. <clears throat> Back here, separated a little bit. Chris Michaels down low with help from his good friend Rue McIntyre. Down low in that mess. Chris Washer up high. Chris Washer up high, along with Joshua Collard. <clears throat> but the 28 and the 07 are starting to get up to that tandem of the 14 and the 33. Oh, Chris Michaels split that. That may cost him a little bit. But now Chris Michaels is going to get draft help from Dylan Thoreau to help him get to second over Matt McIntyre. Although Matt McIntyre getting draft help from Rue McIntyre. How ironic is that? Even though they're not related, their last names are McIntyre, so there you go. <laughs> Chris Michaels now gets to second, thanks to help from Dylan Thoreau. Thoreau trying to get underneath the 07 so he can get to second. But Jessica Villanueva just still hanging on at the front as it's three laps to go here in duel number two. Dylan Thoreau with a run to the inside underneath Chris Michaels with some help from Chris Washer. And Joshua Collard trying to draft with the 88 with also help from the one of Trent Dunham with Preston Ford in there. Angel Navarro toward the backs, just still buying his time. And I also noticed both of the Richard Petty Motorsports cars were in this dual race. Joshua Collard in the 43, Zachary Fitzwater in the 9. Two laps to go here in duel number 2. Dylan Thoreau with a run to the inside. Can he get by Jessica Villanueva? But Villanueva's got her teammate Chris Michaels right behind her. But Thoreau's got Chris Washer behind him. Two out of the three Penske cars were in this duel as well. Dylan Young, Sean Galligan, and Jessica Villanueva just manages to stay clear of the 17, but she separated herself from everybody, so that can easily put those guys behind her up to the 33. White flag is out here in duel number two. Last chance for guys like Dylan Thoreau or anybody behind the 33 of Villanueva to make a run for the lead. And now here comes Thoreau. <coughs> Although Dylan Thoreau's draft partner, Chris Washer, is sort of just not up there to him just yet. And Villanueva's got teammate Chris Michaels right behind her. Thoreau is still sticking his nose down low. I got a feeling we could see another close finish like we saw in duel number one. And I think it's what it's going to be. We're going to see who's going to get it. Coming into the tri-oval. Who's going to get it? It looks like Villanueva gets it. By two one hundredths of a second. Even closer than what we saw in duel number one. Jessica Villanueva wins duel number two here at Daytona. And is going to get to start fourth in the Daytona 500. Another fantastic photo finish right there. Holy cow. I've got a feeling we could see something like this happen when we get to the Daytona 500 soon. That's going to be awesome. But anyways, let's take a look at the rest of the results. As Jessica Villanueva, rookie out of Richard Childress Racing, wins Gatorade Duel number 2 and is going to get to start in 4th for the Daytona 500. Dylan Thoreau, second, third, Chris Michaels, fourth, Chris Washer, fifth, Matt McIntyre. Rest of the top ten, Joshua Collard, Rue McIntyre, Trent Dunham, Alex Hawkins, Preston Plourd. Rest of the top twenty, James Silverfox, David Rivera, Zachary Fitzwater, Jessica Shelton, James McLeod, Sean Galligan, Jeffrey Rose, Chase Oliver, Angel Navarro, who's going to stay running, is going to stay starting in second for the Daytona 500. Dylan Young, and then Dougie Shears. I guess he just lost a draft, and he couldn't get going. So he's going to start dead last <coughs> in the Daytona 500. But anyways, thank you guys for watching duel number two 
here at Daytona. Congrats to Jessica Villanueva, and she's going to get the start in fourth for the 500. But anyways, we'll see you at the Daytona 500 coming soon.